let's review stationary and mobile monitoring networks and some of the questions that should drive your design. Should you deploy a network of fixed sensors, mobile sensor systems, or both? For fixed networks, where should you place stationary monitors? How dense should your network of monitors be? For mobile strategies, what vehicles should you use for mobile monitoring, and where should they drive? How many times does a driver need to pass a location to characterize its pollution adequately? Now, let's break down a few key differences between the two approaches, starting with the stationary approach. Stationary monitoring networks can collect data continuously and provide an effective way to measure pollutants 24-7 at a fixed location. To this point, stationary monitors provide much higher temporal coverage. Stationary monitors can also be a cost-effective option in areas you need to track changes in the same place over time, or where you already have an idea of where the emission sources or problem areas are, but need more specific information about the variability in the same place over time. Building a dense stationary monitoring network can be more feasible for a city considering an initial investment in air quality monitoring. In contrast, let's check out mobile monitoring. Mobile monitoring uses vehicles to take instantaneous measurements as they drive through the streets of a city. This can provide greater coverage and a more granular picture, but operation and maintenance of vehicles and equipment can make it expensive and labor-intensive. In addition, mobile data is often collected during daytime work hours to accommodate driver schedules and thus restrict the measurement to certain hours in the day. In practice, a monitoring strategy could combine both mobile and stationary monitoring to get the best of both approaches. Refer back to your overall goals and design accordingly. These goals will determine what pollutants to measure and the kind of monitoring data you need, which will inform the overall approach and design of your monitoring system. If you determine stationary pollution monitors sampling air across a wide area best match your goals, next you'll have to decide where and how to deploy these sensors. Aside from your goals, here are some guidelines to help ensure success. First, determine if there are regulatory requirements on the placement of monitors. Select locations that fill gaps in the existing regulatory monitor network and are near priority areas, including schools, medical facilities, high pedestrian areas, or underserved communities. You should also consider whether you co-locate with regulatory monitors to evaluate the performance and accuracy of lower grade sensors. Next, distribute sensors as evenly as possible throughout your project area. As you select your location, keep in mind that it's best to include locations that are upwind and downwind of known pollution sources. This will allow for the comparison of sensor data. You'll also want to factor in prevailing winds and other unique regional features that could affect the data. Once you have a general network design, there are many site-specific details you'll need to consider. Are your monitors set at a consistent height and distance from sources throughout the network? The features of each location could also impact installation. For example, do you have written permission from the building or landowners? Are your monitors attached to stable support structures? Also, are there building structures that could obstruct airflow, such as roof awnings, vents, or other natural barriers? What power source can you tap into? Will you have access to an AC, DC, or solar power supply? What about internet connectivity for data transfer and remote access? In addition, consider what safety and security measures to put in place to keep any personnel and equipment safe and your data secure. If you determine mobile monitors best match your goals, next you'll have to decide how to deploy your sensors and which vehicles to use. Mobile monitoring can measure and map the variations in pollution levels at scales ranging from 30 to 150 meters, much finer than most stationary monitoring networks. But each measurement is a snapshot in time of pollution at a certain location. However, you need to take repeated measurements to create a stable, robust, and representative picture of pollution at any one location over time. Different kinds of vehicles can serve as mobile monitoring platforms. In most of our projects, EDF and partners have employed dedicated monitoring vehicles, 
primarily Google Street View cars, whose only job is to collect data. This can be very resource intensive, as you'll need to buy or rent vehicles, hire drivers to systematically drive preset routes, and coordinate closely with drivers on a daily basis. You'll also have logistical details to manage, like specialist contractors, to support daily operations and carry out routine maintenance of the sensor systems. But the key advantage to employing dedicated monitoring vehicles is that you have more control over how, where, and when data is collected. If you don't have access to dedicated monitoring vehicles to collect data, there are alternatives. If you can reach your data goals without collecting data on predefined routes, you may be able to use vehicles from your existing city fleet, such as sanitation, parks department, utility, or health department vehicles. In these scenarios, a project manager would take a look at the fleet histories and select the vehicles that offer the best combination of repeated passes over road segments of interest and coverage of the city. EDF's Future Fleets report describes how this analysis works. EDF's analysis found that a fleet-based monitoring approach, where fleet vehicles drive their regular routes, doing their regular jobs, can achieve substantial coverage of a city in a few months' time by equipping just a few of the right vehicles with sensors. For example, a fleet could map 50% or more of a city with just 10 vehicles driving their regular routes. In Washington, D.C., the top 20 public vehicles covered almost 70% of the entire city in six months. The modest number of public vehicles required to collect data makes it clear that hyperlocal insights are within reach. But further partnerships are needed to achieve this potential and transform vehicles into urban air pollution sensing platforms. The City of Houston and EDF partnered to pilot this approach by leveraging Houston municipal vehicles equipped with simpler, lower-cost sensor systems. The sensor systems are designed for easy installation on top of municipal vehicles, and their functions are streamlined to minimize the time and skills drivers need to operate them. This lower-cost monitoring approach was able to detect elevated pollution levels by a school, park, and industrial facility that would not have been evident from regional stationary monitoring. Remember, the more frequently you collect measurements on each road segment, the larger the sample size you will have to tease out any patterns in the pollution levels within the monitoring area. EDF research shows that 10 to 20 passes at a minimum are needed to obtain stable spatial patterns. Fleet-based data collection may not identify every potential hotspot and lower-cost instruments may not be suitable for mobile measurement of some pollutants. However, this approach is innovative and much less resource-intensive. Once you decide which vehicles to use as mobile monitoring platforms, there are many project-specific details you'll need to consider. Here are a few. Is the instrument mounting system built to dampen vibration? And is it weatherproof so that it supports the required driving patterns? What about the power system? Does it run off engine power or backup power supply? Are the onboard systems capable of data logging and storage for multiple instruments? And can you set up remote visualization of measurements to assess whether your instruments are performing as expected? These are key questions to answer and implement for improved accuracy and durability of your design. We trust the time you invest and these considerations will ensure better results. Thanks for watching. Learn more at globalcleanair.org.